In this experiment, we're going to look at life in action and investigate some of the ingredients that make life work. Now, most organisms need air to breathe and some kind of energy source to live. And by energy, we usually mean food. But in order to thrive and multiply, conditions need to be just right. And that's what we're going to investigate. We're going to use a very simple form of life. This is baker's yeast and it's alive. It's a tiny, single-celled kind of a fungus. And given food and air, it will grow and multiply. But we're going to see which kind of conditions it likes best. And to do that, I'm going to make up a series of sugar solutions. Before you start, print off the glass diagram from your study journal so that you can record which sugar solution is which. I've got four glasses, each with a spoonful of sugar in, and I'm going to add the same amount of water to each. So this first one, I'm going to add cold water. And in the next one, I'm going to put in the same amount of just boiled water from the kettle, but be careful you don't crack the glass. And in the final two, I'm going to put the same amount of water that's at body temperature or blood temperature. So I've just tested that with my finger. Now, give them a quick stir. Cold water. Boiling water. Blood warm and blood warm. So now I'm going to add a sachet of yeast to each glass. And then I'm going to mark off the level of the water on the side of the glass. Now, this last glass I'm going to cover with cling film to restrict the amount of air that the yeast has to work with. So, set your experiment up in the same way so that we can compare results. I'm going to give this five minutes and see if anything's happened. Well, that's five minutes up and the yeast has clearly sprung into action because it started to produce a foam. Now this foam is the result of the yeast using the oxygen in the air to digest the sugar and it's producing a gas as a waste or byproduct. In this particular case it's carbon dioxide and that's the process that makes bread rise in the same way as it's doming and making the cling film rise here. Now to monitor their experiment and keep track of the process, I'm going to measure the thickness of the foam and record how it changes over time. So this one is two centimeters thick. After five minutes. And this one is two centimeters thick. Okay, so I'll give that another five minutes and then I'll come back and make another measurement. Okay, well that's 10 minutes up and this one, which was the boiling water, doesn't seem to be doing very much at all. And this one, which was the cold water, appears to be just starting to produce a very thin layer of foam. And these two are still doing really well, producing more foam. Just gonna measure the thickness again. And this foam has gone up to six centimeters. And this one's 
five centimetres. Now to find out what these observations mean and to interpret the results, you'll need to join in with the online discussion. Get more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.